Welcome back to my team career mode. We had the Amelia Romagna Grand Prix today. Um, and I do have a special helmet for this one. I'll show it off in a minute. But, uh, but last time at Bahrain, we won the opening race of the season for third on the grid. Leclerc with on pole, our teammate. He finished doing it in eighth after getting a bell monkey with the time of the safety car. Don't know why he didn't have pits or he would have lost last time double stacking with us. Um, but he did decide to stay out. And it cost him in the end a podium. But I will put images of the helmet I'm using in this episode all on screen new. Um, the design is still a work in progress, but I added a little Italian touch for it because it's our engine spars home race. Italy, we have the Ferrari engine, that's an Italian manufacturer that's added the Italian flag on top. Any Italians watching, I am sorry if the shade of green and red on the flag is incorrect. Um, I did the best I could. Um, so sorry to any Italians watching if that's slightly wrong, but either way We are looking at some aerodynamic upgrades thinking about the races coming up like Monaco and a few races time coming up Getting some more aero on the car for that Because well, it's Monaco you chuck on as much downforce as you can onto that car I'm pretty sure last season I ran I'm pretty sure in season 3 I was running 11-11 wings in Monaco Either that or it was 10-11. It was either 10-11 or 11-11 like, ma the most downforce I could possibly get onto that car. But also looking at some durability upgrades, because God knows there's a high chance I'm going to have an engine failure in Monaco in a few races time. Not yet. We have Imola today, then we have Portugal, Spain, then Monaco. That's going to be fun. But anyway, our durability department leaves a lot to be desired anyway. You know, after the re regulation reset, which was changed... But, but it was originally power and chassis, but they got changed to aero, chassis, and durability. We got still got some facility upgrades coming in, getting more stuff up to spec 3. We're nearly there with the spec 3 stuff. Um, but speaking of facilities, we have a department event on the personnel suite about um, booking some time with um, Mark Web uh, Lucas Weber from, um, from F1 2019, but we kind of accept it. I think it's maybe because... Uh, unfortunately, I think it's because Leclerc's racecraft is at 100 already, so we kind of add safe and mare to it. The only thing that's not 100 is the experience as at 98, hence why he's 99 rated, 78 focus actually, so pretty good. And as for ourselves, we're going to buy some driver perks by level 1 and 2 on the media coaching. We get mare interview answers. I do want to get level 3 on the... Uh, power mapping, so you know, reduces um, component wear even more. But we need um, person or our our claim level to be 15, and it's 14 at the moment. But upgrades coming in, facility upgrades also coming in. And so at this point, we only hit two on the durability that I want to get up to spec three on the build time and quality control. The resource point generation, I'm gonna leave a level one for all of them. I don't want to upgrade those ones any farther. Because we get plenty of resource points for practice programs anyway, so I really kind of really see the point at the moment of doing those upgrades. But unfortunately, we have had a failure on the durability side of it. Not a bit, not big whoop. It's on the ICE durability. Gonna redo that. That'll come in in time for Portugal. Um, and also, we do have enough to do this MGH upgrade as well, which will come in in time for Portugal as well, I think. But heading over to the weekend, Haas are continuing their trend of no upgrade. But to be fair, them and Aston Martin, the rest of them pretty good in the reg change, all things considered. So they've done pretty good to keep it okay, but we are attack Red Bull to be the best on Piperino. How well that translates to the track, I'm not too sure how well that's going to translate to the track. But I mean, I suppose we will fin out once we get onto the track how well it will translate to said track. Um, as we do head into Saturday, into qualifying for the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. I'm going to be honest, I've not driven this track really since, um, yeah, since, uh, since season three. Um, but... Either way, we continue on. This is not the new helmet. This is actually the old helmet that I used in Bahrain. Um, I don't have the new helmet in for qualifying. I do for the race. Um, but either way, banker lap, opening lap in Q1. Trying to get it as good as I possibly can. Um, but I mean, it's an opening lap. My opening laps usually aren't that brilliant, to, to be fair. I've had some pretty shockers of opening laps here, but we go purple in the, in the final sector. Three 100s behind Verstappen, who's woken up out of nowhere. Hamilton seems to be, I don't know, maybe struggling a little bit so far. But Verstappen, 
Well, it's early doors in the season, but Verstappen seems to have a much better handle on that Mercedes than Hamilton does, you know, as they try and dig themselves out of the hole that they find themselves in in the second half of season three, where they were so strong at the beginning, so much early season promise, I've referred it a lot to Ferrari in 2017 and 2018, but then they just fell off the cliff at the end as we, meanwhile, get a much better run through the final two corners, through the Vivaxa one and two. Um, and we open the DRS, come across the line, we go quickest overall with a 112.6. We end the session quickest by, by four one thousandths of a second to our teammate, my god. Um, but in the end, it's just Q1, you know? George Russell into Q2, Nicholas Osifi out in Q1. Um, and well, what do you know, Q2, it's raining! I actually, honest to god, I was not expecting this. It's gonna, it might rain a little bit at the end of the race, keyword in might, but I did not, I thought it was gonna be dry for all the qualifying. I genuinely thought it was gonna be dry for all the qualifying, that's what the forecast said when I looked at it. But it's both, I recorded the intro and the qualifying in different days, but the DRS is now disabled, we're on the soft compound tires, I don't know if we're on the right tires, to be fair, as we head around towards a little bit twitchy there, a bit of oversteer. On the exit, I'm, I'm, we're not on the right tires, I'm almost sure of that. But I'm gonna close out the lap anyway, and through Aquaman Rally, bit of a drift there as we try and get on the power, but there's just no traction, there's no grip whatsoever. As we head on now, um, Variante Alta, where Yuki Tsunoda crashed in qualifying in real life, of course. We exceeded the track limits, apparently. The Alpha Tower that was ahead of us has cleared off, I think that might be Gasly. Um, I don't know, it could be Matsushita as well, I really don't know which one of them it is. All I know is we have got a Mercedes right on our tail and is pulling out. I think it might be a match with Stafford. We're racing him to the line. He's on the intermediate tires. He's um, start starting a lap. I'm out now again on the mediums. We had to kind of cut the corner there at, um, at the exit of the Tambrella chicane. We're all over the place here in sector one, down towards the Villeneuve chicane on the curb, trying to make up as much time as possible. Getting a much better run through here than on our first lap. And now we're down in the first sector, but quicker than Alcon, which is the key thing. And um, we're down in 16th, we have to improve, and we are improving up the hill now. As we're getting a much better run up here, because there's no twitches of oversteer. Um, through um, Piratel, uh, keeping it well within the bounds of the... Well, not well within, within the bounds of the racetrack. A bit over the car, bumpy there, but tiny touch of oversteer, but still gaining time. Not as bad of an oversteer moment as I had on the previous lap. And now on the curb, you taking the curb to the full advantage, still extending the track there. But as I said, still gaining time. And I think we can maybe gain quite a bit of time in these final couple of corners through Ravazza 1 and 2. The final two, well, I say the final two, there's one tiny kink of a corner remaining through turn 18. We've gained a lot of time. We've gained about a second and a half through there. Turn 19, which isn't really a fucking corner. We go fifth fastest. And in the end, that is enough for Q, to, to make it into Q3. Very close, our top five within a tenth of each other. Um, and Bottas actually managed to mark it on the soft compound tires. He must have gone right at the start of the session. Right at the start. Um, but either way, you know what? He's locked on to starting on the soft tires and out Hamilton into Q3. First time this season he's made it into Q3. Yuki Tsunoda out, as is the two Alpines, Matsushita and um, I believe... Um, the Aston Martin and Russell as well are out. It's still interconditions here in Q3 for the rest of qualifying. So this is going to be fun. I'm not I, I, driving in the wet when I practice this game is not normally something I practice. As we're all over the shop, but it's still purple sector one apparently. Okay, apparently not too many people have gone out. As we get a little kick of oversteer, this has not been a great lap, but apparently we're still purple in the first sector somehow. Not purple second sector, you can see it on the mini map, but we have actually closed a bit on Gadley. Science goes quick as a 21 7 is what we have to try and aim for. A bit quicker than that, actually, because I mean, we do have a bit of a better car than the Ferrari. The Ferrari is, it, it seems to be improved quite a bit, you know? Science on the podium, Boss Ass was, um. No, Science wasn't Science on the podium, it was Verstappen, actually. Um, but, you know, Science is looking good. He was running pretty good in the last race. We go quickest overall with that lap. Um, down to P2 now, of course, with Perez going, currently in the quickest lap, but my first lap was not that good. Um, you know, so I didn't think it would be that quick, but it was, uh, actually. Um, but we're currently up on our time. We've gained, we've gained about six or so tenths, um, so far as we head down towards turn and the checker flag has fallen. This is our final run in qualifying 
It's now or never. This is where it counts. It's the business end of Saturday. Extending the track through Aquaman Rally over the sausage bumpy curbs there. I don't know what to call them. They're not really sausage curbs. Baguette curbs? I don't know what to call those curbs. But the big curbs at turn 9, the turn 9, turn 14 and 50. Variante Alta is what I'm trying to say. It's green in the second sector. We're still about 6 tenths up on our previous best effort. We can still gain pole position here. We can still gain pole. It's still possible. We're up by six tenths on our best, and Perez is only barely faster than our best. Look at the times at the top as we now come across the line, and I believe that is pole position for the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Leclerc in second alongside was on the front row, tenth and a half back, then for stopping out of nowhere. In third, while well, Hamilton is down in seventh, you know, about what, four, five tenths, about five tenths, of four, well, four and a half tenths slower than his teammates. So Verstappen getting a bit much better handle on that Mercedes than uh, than Hamilton is. Then signs him fourth in the two Red Bulls, and it's Gasly, Bottas, Norris closing at the top ten. It's going to be fully dry to begin with. It might rain a little bit right at the end of the race, but whether the rain comes or no in time for the end of the race, I do not know. We'll have to wait and find out. Um, come the race, come the end of the race. We've got 32 laps of Imola ahead of us, though. It's going to be fun. This track is really, really fun to drive. It is so fun to drive. Now, let's head to the grid for the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Hello there, and welcome back to Imola, home circuit of the Scuderia Ferrari. We expect to see a lot of local supporters in red today. They've all turned out for what we have every expectation of being a sensational event here at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. 3.1 miles of track here at Imola featuring 19 turns, nine to the right and 10 to the left. Remember that Imola differs from most other Formula One circuits as it's driven anti-clockwise. Let's hope no one forgets that today. The exit from turn 18 will probably be the setup for many of today's overtakes, leading as it does into the longest straight of the circuit and its only DRS zone. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. And it's fantastic to have you with us here today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the rundown into turn one. It's all a bit like going into battle and the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. It's the owner driver in pole position then, with Charles Leclerc alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Verstappen, Sainz, Sergio Perez, and Fettel, Hamilton, Gasly, Bottas, and Lando Norris, Sonoda, Matsushita, Fernando Alonso, and Ocon, Russell, Stroll, Jack Aitken, and Christian Lungard, Giovinazzi, Latifi, Mick Schumacher, and Nikita Mazepin. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. This is our engine supplier's home Grand Prix. Let's give them a race worth watching. Cheers, Jeff. That's kind of the point. So, anyway, here we are on the grid. It's going to be one stop unless that rain comes. It's saying on the chart there at the top is going to come just after the end of the race. So, hopefully it won't come and it can be a straightforward dry race. Um, but as I'm pressing wrong buttons, you can see that Charles is selected to start on the medium tires along with Pierre Gasly further doing the field in eighth place. Other than that, it's all soft tires, except for the 12 Williams boys, also often for the medium tires. So, 18 on the softs, 4 on the mediums. Let's head to five red lights ahead of us here in Emila for the Amelia Romani Grand Prix. They're out very quickly, and we are racing in Emila. It's an average start for us. It's a brilliant start for a teammate. Max Verstappen's at a good start as well. As we all make our way down towards turn two. Verstappen on the outside of trying to get the position for second place. We squeeze him out, stay ahead. He's under pressure from Sebastian Vettel who's coming back at him. Bottas trying to get ahead of Hamilton. 
Uh, further down the field, it's Vettel is now going to go with us through the field. Now, if she can, we stay ahead of him. And we keep second place as Leclerc leads the way then. From second up, from second on the grid, we're down to second. And behind us is Sebastian Vettel, Max Verstappen, Sergio Perez, Carlos Sainz in sixth, then Lewis Hamilton and the other Mercedes ahead of Valtteri Bottas, Pierre Gasly, Yuki Tsunoda rounding out the top ten. But Sebastian Vettel, he nearly gained like two places there on the opening lap, my god. And here he goes towards Mario Delta, he's trying to down the inside, it won't too wide, won't work here my friend. And it doesn't, he bailed out of it. He is very, very punchy today, is Sebastian Vettel rejuvenated I wonder. As he sets fastest lap, heading on to lap three after we said it, and then Charles had also said it. he's looking to go around the outside and turn two, he backs out of it. He is absolutely, he is rejuvenated at Red Bull it seems. Uh, absolutely rejuvenated, the clothes got a bit of breathing space up front by 1.2 seconds. As we're trying to try to keep a very, very quick Sebastian Vettel behind us. I did not expect, I knew he could be possibly rejuvenated, I didn't expect this, my god, if he's another look to go for a move in Variante Alta, that will not work, my friend. Too wide will not work here. Uh, that chicane, too wide is a no-go. Absolute no-go, but we're going to be in trouble doing this main straight, um, as he's going to have DRS for days. Uh, and I'm all out of deployment, he's going to have a brilliant run on us down this straight. Uh, we're going to cross the line to start lap number four now. He has DRS on us. We're deploying ERS. There's nothing we're going to do be able to do to defend from him. We just kind of have to let him by uh, for the time being. Vettel up to second place. All we do is just try and stay within a second of him so we can come back at him later on. But further down the field, we can see Yuki Tsunoda getting past Pierre Gasly. Lance Stroll getting past George Russell. It's all happening here in Imola today. And it's going from bad to worse for Gasly. Lando Norris is now going to go to him in the other McLaren car. Gasly now down to 11th. He's outside the points. He has Fernando Alonso, the next car behind him. And meanwhile, back up with we were the closest we've been to Vettel since he overtook us. Um, so there's that. We're within the DRS. We've all the ERS in the world to play. We have personal best lap time of 15.8 15.5. But we're too far back to go for a move, as is Vettel on the clear. He's not close enough to go for a move, but we have to bail out across the gravel, cut the corner of the FIS, so absolutely nothing there. It was either that or just wrist body damage. As here goes Alonso having a go at Gasly through the Tamborella chicane. They're banging wheels, Gasly holds on to the position. Alonso stays in that Alvatari sandwich as Matsushita's in an Alpine sandwich at the moment. <clears throat> Is back with us. We've stayed close enough on this lap. Jeff is trying to get us to change our strategy. I'd rather not. I'd rather not. Um, as, um, well, we're right on the back of Sebastian Vettel here. We can maybe have a brilliant run down the main street. He's going to have DRS as well, though. There could be a lot of moves happening here. Uh, the DRS will open up for us. It'll open up for Vettel as well. Leclerc doesn't have the DRS, but he is gaining on Leclerc. He wants to go around the, down the inside, switches to the outside. Towards the chicane, Leclerc on the inside, they bang wheels, Leclerc keeps him behind, I didn't go for a move, decided to stay in behind, we stay behind the German for the time being, waiting for the opportunity to strike, and will that opportunity be here, the told that we dive down the inside, bit of contact made, but it's a move nonetheless, we're up back into second place, we were patient, waited for the move, and we got it. Uh, we got the move done in Vettel, is he? He's pulling off, he's in the pit lane, I think he got wing damage from that. Sorry Seb, sorry about that Seb, but we've got DRS on our teammate, we're going to overtake him down into turn two. Move it done, we just about get it slowed down enough to make the second part of the chicane there. But it means Leclerc is still right on our tail on the run down to the Villeneuve chicane. He's going to come back at us, we're going to just let him by. We, there's no point in us losing time fighting each other. You know, just gonna let him by, uh, get our own back later on, and we're on to lap 10 now. We're pitting in next lap, on lap 11. Uh, we're gonna come back at him down into turn 2, I was about to say turn 1. Again, just about getting it slowed down enough, I'm gonna get floor damage if I'm not careful here. Leclerc once again right on our tail, he's gonna go down the inside. Again, he's gonna try, but we're gonna chop him off, and we're gonna hold on to the lead for the time being. And, well, keep him behind for the time being. He's bloody good! I told you, his AI is bloody good. I know how good his AI is, and the answer is bloody good, as we've seen so far this season, and we'll see for the rest of this season. 
Um, but we continue on. Um, with Leclerc right behind us. As I said, we're gonna be ping in on lap 11. That was the plan anyway, but Leclerc's having another look. Mate, don't go too wide here. You don't go too wide into this chicane. He bailed out. I broke a bit later, went off track. No harm done. Uh, but we're in trouble down the main straight. To be fair, we're gonna be boxing at the end of the next lap anyway. So if he overtakes, it's not a huge deal. Um, it's not a massive deal if he overtakes us. As we exit out of the final corner, well, I'll say the final corner, there is turn 19 just here, just before the line. But it's not, it's it kind of now. like turn it one Sochi, or turn one on this track. It's just a small kink as the player down the inside, we just kind of let him by. Um, and just let him take the lead, we're, as Jeff said, we're boxing this lap anyway. So it's not a massive loss. Um, as that says, you can see me selecting no one winged average bird, just to make sure, because I've been fucked over by that before getting a wing change when I didn't need one. Um, that happened in Canada, season 4 F1 2020. Um, but either way, we're into the pit lane, the Mercedes crew and the Ferrari crew are also coming out for, um, that might be Hamilton, I'm not too sure which one it is. The McLaren and Alpine crew are also out, the Alpha Tauri I saw coming out, we're putting on the hard compound tires to go to the end of this race. As we now start the trundle down the rather long pit lane here at Imola. What, seriously, why the hell is this pit lane so long? Someone answer me that. As we rejoin the track, we can see in the background a Red Bull of um, Sebastian Vettel overtaking Christian Lungard. And Vettel on the salt compound tires. Uh, if he had to pit after that wing damage, he's going to have to stop again. As uh, there's Merfolk into the pit lane now. Um, and that, that was Hamilton that was doing it. was Hamilton and Baltas who were in for, for uh, Mercedes and Ferrari. Vettel's right on our tail. We're back up to third. Russell hasn't stopped in. Neither is Leclerc. They're still way up the road. Um, and, uh, well, now there's nothing we can do to defend against Vettel. He has a stop again anyway. He was right on our tail. As uh, you can see, Lungard under pressure from Max Verstappen. Carlos Sainz right in behind is looking for the move as well on the Williams. Down towards the first corner. Can he follow his former Toro? So teammate through. Or will Lungard hold on to the position? He holds on for the time being. And Perez, meanwhile, has been clearing Lando Norris. I think Matsu Jukadl has been clearing Matsu Chita as well. Perez, well, at least trying to clear Lando Norris. Does he get the move done? Yes, he does. The Mexican up into 11th place. Um, and yeah, yeah, Scadley ahead of Matsushita. I don't know what's going on with Perez. I don't know why he's that far down. Um, I don't think he was that far down to begin with. Um, I, I, I don't know what's going on with Perez. I don't know. I have, all I know is he does over to Glando Norris for 11th place. And he's now in a McLaren sandwich. The team he drove for back in 2013. Of course. Um, he's on the hard compound tires. Um, so I'd assume he's going to the end. Um, as, um, well, George Russell, as I said, still has to stop in this race. Leclerc is stopping this lap now. He's a 22 second gap, but about the 27, 20, about a 28 second gap to Vettel or so. If Russell is also in, so Vettel, will he retake the lead of the race or will Leclerc manage to hold on to the lead and effectively have a free pit, pit stop? Uh, let's find out. He's exiting the pit lane now, still in the lead of this race. So Leclerc is... We can't the lead of the race. Vessel's now just two seconds behind. We're third. And in the background there you can see Carlos Sainz clearing Christian Lungard. There's another Mercedes getting involved. There's Lewis Hamilton this time. Clearing the Williams as well. You can see Bottas and Sonoda are there in the background. Sonoda's into the back of Bottas. Oh, Yuki was coming in there way too hot. He's lost his front wing. He's pulling off. Sonoda, it becomes the first retirement of this race. What happened here? You, what happened here? You see Baltas there just ahead. Was there Baltas was going to go for a move on the Williams on Lungard and, and Sonoda just came in way too hot. He was going to go for it on Lungard. I think you can see. You see, but he was going to go for the move down the inside but bailed out, slowed down and Sonoda was not expecting it whatsoever. And just slammed into Baltas who I will probably have floor damage from that but the virtual safety guard has been deployed for it. Vettel could pit now and get a get a bit of a cheaper pit stop than if he were because he does have to stop again. If I were him, I'd pit for a set of horrors, but he doesn't. He stays out. Vettel stays out as the virtual safety car will be ending. I've lost quite a bit of time to Vettel here. Um, lost quite a bit of time here under the VSC, about almost a second here as we return to green flag running. Verstappen is about a second and a half behind us. 
As I'm getting all out of shape through the real nerf chicane. Nothing new there then. Not, that, was, that was Tamarello. I'm getting my corners mixed up. Again. Don't mind me there to take a small drink of water. Verstappen's right on our tail. He's looking for them. If you want to go to the inside, we cut him off. He's looking to the outside. We cut him off. We keep him behind us. The, I almost said the Mexican. The Dutchman, rather. Still behind us. We're going wide, uh, Piratella, once again. And now downhill, that's where George Russell crashed, I think, under the stage guard last year. Um, but we're now heading back up the hill. Verstappen right on our tail. Is he going to look for a move? Yes, he is. He's going to look for the move. We're going to just let him by very cleverly so we can get some DRS. Uh, th that's my plan. Get the DRS down the main straight. That's my plan. I'm being tactical here. You know, kind of like, um, God, was it Yarn of Wolfmere in the Mexico race of uh, eSports? Onto the head and onto the last lap. He just slammed on the brakes with someone buying the stadium. And so we could get the DRS and re overtake down the main straight. His vessel's back into the pit lane now. He's gonna have to make up a bunch of places. We're trying to make a place back on Max Verstappen. Down towards the first corner, we go by. We are through, we just about make the, the second part of the corner. But he's still right on our tail now as we now make the run down towards Vyronov. We're gonna defend the inside line. He's trying around the outside. We squeeze him out, he loses quite a bit of time. He's kind of slow on the anchors there. He's lost quite a bit of time to us. Falling out of the second, we're kind of a bit home free after that. He's got Max, with, uh, Carlos Sainz rather, right on his tail. And that's a checkerboard there of Mercedes and Ferrari. Here's Perez, who's has he been into the pit lane again? What kind of strategy is Perez on? I thought he was going... I thought he was going to go to the end. He was on the hearts. He's not on the salt. He's been into the pit lane. What's happened to Perez? I don't know. But either way, Carlos Sainz trying to get past Max Verstappen here towards the first corner. Can he do it? Can the Spaniard get past his former teammate? They bang tires. There goes the part of Verstappen's front wing. He keeps the place, but Verstappen definitely lost a bit of his front wing there. Um, it's down towards Villeneuve, um, Verstappen, uh, uh, freaking Sainz gets the place. As Verstappen into the pits, that's kind of helped Bottas maybe make a place up on his former teammate Lewis Hamilton. The Ferrari and the Mercedes, another Ferrari and Mercedes, one wheel to wheel down the main street. Verstappen there getting a nose change for definite. Oh, uh, they bang tires, the two former teammates. Uh, uh, but Bottas is past. Um, Lewis Hamilton is Vettel's been making his way up the order to go. You can see on the ladder he's got past Norris and Ocon now. He's up into eighth place. Um, as Hamilton is in! Hamilton is in at the end of this lap! He must have picked up some wing damage from that. As uh, speaking of Sebastian Vettel, here he is. He's gonna be up into seventh place now. Maybe make that sixth place as there he goes on Nobuhara Matsushita. He is reinvigorated. A Red Bull absolutely reinvigorated. Um, and George Russell there. George Russell's up into the points there. You can see Perez is in again. How many times has this man been into the pit lane this race? Well, he must have been his first stop on. He must have been into this. It must be like his third or fourth stop. What kind of strategy is this that man on? Is a Red Bull hired the Ferrari strategy or something? Is here goes Lewis Hamilton on Jack Aiken up the hill towards turn nine. That's a bold move there from the Brit. I've never seen an AI go for a move there, but he's gone for it. As uh, the other uh, the other Mercedes is in 10th place. Vettel's right on the back of his um, former championship title rival, Fernando Alonso. And he's going to go for the move down the main straight. Don't mind me, I'll take another drink of water. There goes Vettel on Alonso. He's through. He's up into 5th place. Sebastian Vettel. Very much rejuvenated. Can he catch Bottas? I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, as there goes Alcon and Matsushita. They're banging tires. I think Alcon was trying to get the move done. He couldn't quite get it. I think he might have gotten wing damage from that. As uh, further down the field, Gasly on stroll. Hamilton's trying to clear him as well. He wants to go to the inside as the switch to the outside. Can he get the move done? It's always a 50-50 round here. Stroll is keeping it in there. Hamilton backs out. Does know what to go for the move in the end. He'll just sit in behind. I wonder if he's going to go for the move into the um, chicane there. With a little fast forward and continue on to see up here, up the hill. Hamilton is going for it down the inside. He's going to go into turn nine. Can he get the move done? He pushes Troll a bit wide. But Hamilton's up into 13th place. 
Not exactly going right for Mercedes today, or Red Bull a lot. Not exactly going right for them. You know, bit of wing damage, and for once, only one of it was my fault. You know, that does certainly make a change. Um, uh, well, Mercedes, as I said, they've been a little bit shocking since, like, mid-season three. Um, Alcon is indeed into the pit lane. That's going to promote Verstappen up into the point. He's now right on the tail of George Russell for P9, so he could potentially be scoring two points here in this race. He's going to go for it on the Brit. Pardon me, not much Russell can do to defend from that. And Verstappen's up in the P9, but George Russell's still in the points. And Verstappen now going after his uh, good friend Lando Norris. Again, I don't think there'll be too much Norris can do to defend against this. He couldn't defend well, too much to defend against Hamilton earlier in the year. The real life, Emilia Romagna Grand Prix couldn't do much to defend against Verstappen here. Verstappen up in the 8th place. I don't think he can catch Matt Yoshita. Bit too far off the road, but meanwhile back with us. Um, well, it's Leclerc's in a world of his own. And meanwhile, we've been, um, well, we've been keeping it okay, but now science has closed in on us. We just have one mere lap to survive, one mere DRS zone to survive. We're going to need all the deployment we can possibly get to down this main straight as, as science will be right on our tail. Weaving around a little bit. He wants to go to the inside. We force him to go the long way around. But we keep him ahead. We keep him behind. We hold on to second place. Sainz. I said to look out for Ferrari. They might be bloody good. You know, they've made some improvements. They have. Ferrari so far are looking bloody good in this career mode so far. It's just season four. But we do hold on in the end to second place. He doesn't look there into Toza. But we keep him behind. Looking like third and fourth for Ferrari. Looking like a one-two Ferrari team. Meanwhile, it's looking bloody good for us at the moment. Extending the track, um, we just should be able to survive here, unless Sainz finds it sticking the wheel at the inside at um, at Variante Alto, which I don't think he will. But someone who's had a very quiet afternoon since taking the lead is our teammate Charles Leclerc, who has got the lead on lap 11, and he's still leading now as he takes the checkered flag to win the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. His first win of the season. Um, pretty good, you know, he's had it pretty easy since, since he took the lead. He's been bloody quick all race as we're gonna just about hold on for second place in the end. Pretty good, all things considered. You know, pretty good, you know, and uh, science in third, it's an all Ferrari powered podium in Italy, what of it? I mean, come on, it's not a double Ferrari podium, but it's a triple Ferrari powered podium. They take the chequered flag then here in Imola in what has been another outstanding Grand Prix. So Anthony, what made the difference out there today? I'd say it was down once again to good consistent driving, nailing the corners, working to the track conditions and perfecting the team's strategies. They got all of these things right today and the results speak for themselves. The faces on our top three look so incredibly happy as they make their way up to the podium. A much deserved victory and a brilliant performance from them all. Well, what do you know? P1 is our current teammate, P3 is our former teammate. Uh, it's an all Ferrari powered podium, you know? Whatever. The only thing that could be better is if one of the cars of the Ferrari. If there was a two Ferraris on a podium. I'm sure the Tafalsi would love that. Okay, kind of. If it wasn't my team, that would include myself. But double podium for us, it's a one, two. I'm happy. You know, we didn't get the win. But either way, Vettel recovering to fifth, you know, pretty good, all things considered. Sebastian Vettel reinvigorated as uh, Latifi and Schumacher and Sonoda, the three retirements for this race. Um, and in terms of the standings, we still lead the way. Leclerc is up to third, to second in the standings, 14 points back for us. Fernando Alonso, how the hell is he in third? I've, I've been saying watch out for, uh, freaking, I've said watch out for Ferrari, watch out for Red Bull. Maybe watch out for Fernando bloody Alonso. My God, as a Ferrari leap up in the second of the Constructors, 37 points back for Wiss in first, leading the way of the Constructors Championship. This is the best start to a season we have had in career mode. This is our season. I'm telling you, this is our season. Leclerc will make it easy on the title front. I just have the hope I don't fucking... Aqua plane into the barrier and it's a wet Singapore like I did in season three 
on F1 2020 when I had Leclerc as my teammate. If you watch 2020 career mode, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyway, we have the Portuguese Grand Prix next episode. Um, that one, to be fair, Portimao, not my favourite track, not my least favourite track. But hey, we've had two good races, so let's see what's going to happen in Portimao. I'm not overly confident. Because I'm not that great around Portugal. But either way, gonna let end this year. It's all for new. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all those stuff. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.